All right, welcome to College Algebra. This is section P.2, day one. We are looking at exponent rules today. So first question, it says to simplify b to the fifth times b to the seventh. If we were going to write this out the long form, b to the fifth means that we have five b's being multiplied together. And then it says to multiply seven more. All right, we don't want to have to do that for every question. So our shortcut is to just say, well, let's count up how many b's are being multiplied. And in this case, we had five in the first chunk and seven in the second, which gives us a total of 12. So our shortcut rule is as long as the base matches, we can simply add the exponents. It is critical, though, that that base is the same. So in question A, we have a base of two. That means we can combine them. We are going to end up with two and then our power, we have a 2, and we need to add in the 3. So we have 2 to the 5th power. Something like that could be simplified. And I would expect for small numbers like that that you would go ahead and complete that down to the 32. The second example, we do have some coefficients. And it's really common for students to be in the habit of adding these exponents, and then they start doing the same with the coefficients. But in this case, the 6 and the 5, they can't be added. It does tell us to multiply those together. So this is going to end up being 30. And then we do have some common bases. We have an x to the fourth and an x to the second. We can put those together and add our exponents to make that x to the sixth. Same with the y's. We have 3 in the first uh, factor and 7 in the second factor. We are going to have y to the tenth. All right, our second rule is what do we do when we have some of the same base on top and some in the denominator? In this case, we are going to be subtracting those exponents. All right, so in our first example, we have a negative 2 as our common base, so we will have negative 2 as our base, and then we simply subtract the exponents. 7 minus 4 gives us a total of 3, and negative 2 cubed would be negative 8. Our second example here, we have coefficients, the 30 and the 5. We are going to have to go ahead and just divide those like it says to do. 30 divided by 5 would be 6. We can use this shortcut rule, though, for our x's and y's. We have x to the 12th over x to the 3rd. We can subtract those to be x to the 9th. And for our y term, we have 9 on the, in the numerator, 7 in the denominator. That's a total of 2 that would be remaining. All right, our next rule, the zero rule. All right, our rule says that any base to the zero power is one. Why does that work? Well, if b to the fourth means we have four b's being multiplied together, then we are going to end up with the exact same thing in the numerator and denominator. And when we start dividing those out, we just leave ones in their spot. All right, so 8 to the 0 power is 1. Negative 6 to the 0 power is 1. But be careful on this next one, because the only thing being raised to the 0 power is the 6. So this is really like saying we have a negative times that 1. 5x to the 0, all of this. Sorry for that interruption. We have 5x all being raised to the 0 power. We are going to get a 1 for an answer. But on this next example, the only thing being raised to the 0 power is the x. So this is really 5 times 1, or just the 5. All right. The next rule is how do we deal with negative exponents? It says if b is a real number not equal to 0, and n is a natural number, then b to the negative n power is the reciprocal, 1 over b to the positive n power. So that means if we start out with a base to a negative power, we can reverse that. We can flip that and make it move down into the denominator to become 1 over b to the positive n. But if our negative exponent is already in the denominator, we have to flip that up. So this is going to become b to the nth power. All right, let's try a couple examples. 
So 9 to the negative 2. We are going to have to take the reciprocal of that, so 1 over, I'm going to have to pause the video here and reorient my board. All right, let's try this again. We have 9 to the negative 2 powers, so we are going to need to take its reciprocal, 1 over 9 squared, and then I would like you to simplify that to be 1 over 81. Second example, negative 2 to the negative 5 power. The whole negative 2 is being raised to that negative exponent, so we are going to have to shift that to the denominator and have it be a positive 5 exponent. Negative 2 to the 5th is negative 32. Okay. In example C, our negative exponent piece is in the denominator. It will have to move up to the numerator. So we have 1 times 6 to the second power if we move that up, which is just 36. And our last example of this, we have 7 times x to the negative 5 times y squared. The only piece that has a negative exponent is that x. So the 7 and the y squared do not move, but the x to the fifth has to move to the denominator. All right, next rule is the power rule for exponents. b to the second power raised to the fourth power means we have b squared four times. All right, which just means we have eight b's all being multiplied together, so we can write that as b to the eighth. Our shortcut is simply to multiply the exponents. So in our first example, 2 to the second to the third would be 2 to the sixth. Again, we could simplify that to be 64. We have y to the fifth to the negative third, which would be y to the negative 15, but we never leave negative exponents. We would simplify that to be 1 over y to the 15th. And in our next one, we have two negatives, and a negative times a negative is positive. This will be b to the eighth. So nothing needs to move there. All right, our next example, or our next rule, is the product of powers. So we have a product, a times b, all being raised to an exponent. That exponent has to be applied to each factor of that product. So ab to the nth power is a to the nth times b to the nth. So in our example, we have a negative 2. It would need to be raised to that fourth power, as well as the y squared being raised to the fourth power, which ends up being negative 2 to the fourth, or 16, y to the eighth. All right, the quotient rule. Same idea. We have to distribute that exponent to all the terms inside. We've got a to the nth over b to the nth. So both the numerator and the denominator have to have that power. So in our first example, we have negative 3 to the 4th, and we have x being raised to the 4th. And negative 3 to the 4th is 81 over x to the 4th. All right, go ahead and pause the video and try the next one. All right. We should have distributed that cube to both the x squared and the 4. So we have x to the 6th over 4 cubed. And 4 cubed is 64. So that would be my final answer. All right. Our next section deals with simplifying exponential expressions. A couple rules to think about. It is simplified when no parentheses appear, when no powers are raised to other powers, when each base occurs only once, and when you have no negative or zero exponents. All right, so in this first example, we have lots of pieces. We have a negative 3, we have an x, and we have a y. All need to be cubed. All right, simplifying, negative 3 cubed is negative 27. x to the fourth cubed, we can't leave a power to a power, so we have to go ahead and multiply those out. And we end up with y to the 15th as our third factor. Okay, second example. 
we do have coefficients here that can be divided. We have a negative 35 divided by 5. We should end up with negative 7. Looking at our x's, now a couple ways to look at this. We have two x's on the top and six on the bottom. If you follow the rule of subtracting those, we would get x to the 2 minus 6 or negative 4, which would then have to be flipped over because we can't leave that negative exponent. The other way to look at it is where do you have more x's? If we were to write these all out, we have more x's on the bottom. And if we start canceling out common ones from the numerator and the denominator, we are going to end up with 4 left in the denominator. So let's go ahead and just do that. For the y's, we have 4 on top for an exponent, and we have a negative 8. If we subtract that power, 4 minus a negative 8, we end up with a 12. So we're going to have y to the 12th in the numerator as well. All right, third example. We can multiply the negative 7 and the negative 2 to be a 14. We can combine our x's. We have 1 here, and we have 5 in the second factor. So we have x to the 6th. For our y's, we have 4 in the first one and 6 in the second one for a total of 10. All right. 4x squared divided by y, all being raised to a negative 3 power. You have a couple options. You can distribute that negative 3 exponent to each of those pieces, or we can get rid of the negative exponent first. So that's probably what I like to do first. Go ahead and because it is a negative, we're going to take its reciprocal, which means everything flips over. So this is going to be equivalent to y over 4x squared to the third power. And now we don't have any negative exponents left. We can go ahead and uh, distribute that 3 exponent to each of the terms inside. So we're going to have y cubed. 4 cubed is 64. And x squared cubed would be x to the sixth. All right. Last question. I'd like you to pause the video and go ahead and try this on your own. And then we will come back and check our answer. All right, anytime you get an equation or an expression like this that looks pretty complicated, take a minute and break it down. We have a piece right here that's all being raised to that zero power, which means that's just equivalent to one. And so that whole piece is basically going to drop out of my equation or my expression. Next, notice that we have a lot of negative exponents, both in the parentheses and on the outside. And when you multiply a negative times a negative, it does end up being positive. So I would go ahead. Instead of trying to flip this first piece over, I would go ahead and distribute that negative 2 exponent because it's going to turn all of our inside exponents positive. So we are going to have 2 to the second, x to the sixth, and y to the second. In our next chunk, we have 2 to the negative 2. We have x to the twelfth, and we have y to the negative 8. For our denominator, we have 2 squared. We have x to the negative 8. And we have y to the negative 12. All right. So are there any things that we could cancel out before we move on? I see something right here. Both have a 2 squared. We could reduce that to being 1s. That will simplify things a little bit. The only other constant that we have in here is this piece right here. So because it has a negative 2 exponent, we are going to have to flip that to the denominator. 2 squared would become a 4. All right, looking at our x's, on the top, we have 6 of them here and 12 of them here. That's 18. And then we have this negative 8 on the bottom. So if we took 18 minus negative 8, we're going to get 26. Same thing would happen is if we brought that up to the top as x to the positive 8 to get rid of that negative expression. And now we have 6 plus 12 plus 8 more. We have x to the 26th. Looking at our y pieces, we can think of moving this term down 
to make it positive. We can think of moving this term up to make it positive, if you like combining them with positive exponents. And now we have y squared, y to the 12th, that's 14 y's on top, 8 y's on the in the denominator, which gives us a total of 6 y's left in the numerator. All right, make sure you check with your textbook if there were any parts of this that were confusing, and then also you can always stop in and check with me. Your assignment. It's page 33, questions 1 to 63 odds, and 107 to 113 odds.